we wanted to, um, to hear from Antonio because Antonio is a former Muslim who had converted to Islam, like our brother CL. Uh, he converted to Islam and after a while realized Islam just wasn't the truth. Antonio, do we have you on the phone? Dude, how you guys doing? How you doing, brother? What's happening? I'm struggling, wobbling around, but I'm good by God's grace. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus hey, hey good, to, good to hear from you. Uh, we have a lot of callers, so we want to try and get to them uh, when we get the chance, but we also want to hear from you. So, uh, brother, tell us, uh, I, I happen to know that you became uh, a Muslim um, eventually. What, was, what, was, what were things like for you before you were uh, a Muslim? Were you, uh, were you a good boy, Antonio? Was I a good boy? Literally, <laughs> Sam Simone will be shaking in his boots if he came across my path. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, yeah, right. no, I was not. I'm, I'm joking. I was not raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. I was not raised in a Muslim family. I sold drugs. I was in and out of jail. I learned how to break in the houses at a very young age. I mean, I was a career criminal, no joke. Mm -hmm. um, and if it wasn't for God, the Holy Spirit, leading me through... Yes, I did say through Islam. God led me through Islam to know the truth, the beauty of Jesus Christ. So, so a a Antonio, not, Antonio, yeah. uh, you you said so. You were a uh, you were a good troublemaker when you were younger. Um, and yeah, yet pretty you, much. And yet, and yet, you converted to Islam. How did how did that happen? Uh, okay, long story short. Um, very long story short, actually. I was sick and tired of my life. I was very depressed. So one day I was working at a factory job. I had a few friends that were Muslim that would tell me about Islam, but I kind of didn't, you know, listen to them and stuff like that. So I kind of just, um, one day at a factory job, I was like, you know what? I need to, you know, learn more about who God is and stuff like that. I was just really depressed. And so after my job, I got out of work, and I went to the local mosque here in uh, where I'm from. And then this little tiny short uh, Arab man came talking to me, stuff like that, telling me about Islam, how could Islam could change your life. And that's what I needed the most. I needed a change in my life because um, I got tired of going to jail one too many times. And so this, this Arab man was explaining about Islam um, and stuff like that. He was like, he told me that we believe in all the prophets, like, uh, what is it, Adam, Moses, Abraham, and, you know, we believe in Jesus. So I was just like, I didn't know anything about, you know, the biblical prophets or anything like that, so I, you know, it really didn't matter to me. So, you know, he told me um, about Muhammad, he's the final messenger, and, you know, if I want to accept Islam, I can admit wholeheartedly right now, maybe I prematurely took my shahada. I can admit, I did. Because I didn't know anything about Islam. All I knew was I needed a change of my life. Mm -hmm. And the guy said the shahada with me. I took my shahada, and I started a whole nother world. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so that's how it began. And, 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 and by the way, that's, that's all it takes to become a Muslim, right? It, you don't have to understand a lot to, no, to become a Muslim, right? Just make that confession of faith. Yeah, you have to make that confession of faith. Yeah, just make that confession of faith. Yeah, you have to make that confession of faith. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're at the end of a sword, right? It doesn't matter if you're at the end of a sword tip pointing at your neck and you, you recite that. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's how you become a Muslim. Exactly. Just say the Shahada. And I said it and started a whole nother life, man. I started praying five times a day. He didn't. Uh, the Muslim imam didn't instruct me how to pray properly in Arabic. Mm -hmm. He just gave me the Quran, and I got some tapes and some lectures by Mati Dad, and I learned my apologetic. The same Shimon couldn't mess with me. Yeah, that's right. I was a Muslim. School you, son. Own you, baby. Uh -huh. and, Antonio, if you were learning your apologetics from D dot, I can guarantee you Sam Shamoud would uh, would would take you to the uh, Sam oh, Shamoud School far, of Apologetic by far. Instruction. By far, I most respect Sam Simone by far, yeah. and you guys can quote me verbatim. By far, historically, is the world's greatest apologist against Islam. <laughs> by far, thanks, brother. Thank you. But yeah. hey, I mean, praise God, I don't believe on all the hype. Don't believe the hype. Yeah, yeah. 
No, but now you're going to yeah, get the try. Muslims very angry at me now. Right. Thank you. Get me all this attention that's that the, I don't that's, want. That's the plan, Antonio. That's the plan. Get all <laughs> Get the out attention. Of the picture, right? on yeah, Sam. Snake, all right. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but Lord bless you and shine his face on you. All right. So, <laughs> a- Antonio, um, uh, it, it sounds like the, 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 uh, the man who told you about Islam, there are Christian preachers who are kind of like that, right? Get, the, get people to say a sinner's prayer, and then, yeah, and then you're on your way. The you're yeah. on your way. Oh, um, that's, so, that's so, you're so doing, so, rampant. It's so rampant. Yeah. It's so sad. Don't yeah. even get me on the tirade of what's going on in modern day evangelicalism. I, I trust me, Antonio. I don't want to get you on a tirade because I know I know you'll not yeah. stop. <laughs> All right, brother. So, uh, so you are you are this guy kind of left you hanging, but you started praying five times a day and so on. What happened after that? What happened after that? Now, this is the interesting spiritual aspect. I started having dreams of Jesus Amen. that I could not explain mm-hmm. through. And through whatever Islamic theology I was learning from Amati Dot, which is the basics. So I was like, who is this person, this figure appearing in my dream? When I awake, I had this impression on my heart that this was Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I could not explain it. I washed it away. And then for about like over a year, I was wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. And I was praying about it. And I was searching the Quran. And then I came across some Christians going door-to-door evangelizing in one of the neighborhoods where I'm from. And so I figured I know who Jesus is because I'm learning about who Esau was, what I thought who Esau was. And I came across these men. And we started debating, started talking back and forth and stuff like that. I was using Imati Dot's argument. And these Christian men, unfortunately, did not know Apparently, they never crossed uh, your website or Sam Simone's website to have a basic knowledge of how simple these arguments really are. Um, One of them is Muhammad's in the Bible. And (laughs) that is so any first-grade reader, and I'm not trying to be insulting, but really, Islam insults the minds of anybody. Because any contextual context of just any of these verses that I was reading when I was a Muslim to try to backload Muhammad into the text, it's clear. It's a- so a- nice. Anton- Antonio, I have to disagree with you. Muhammad is clearly in the Bible. The Bible says, beware of false prophets. They come oh. to you exactly. in sheep's clothing. Exactly. They come body. to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, Muhammad came, hey, exactly. you Christians, you, you, you Jews, I love you, I agree with you. And later on... Uh, now you have to pay me the jizya or die. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah. But I know that's not the sort of argument your uh, your friends were using. But go ahead. No, yeah. So, and so I was debating these Christian guys and stuff like that. And this one of the Christian men, he gave me the Bible. He said, read this one verse and read it out loud. Okay, I have no problem. I haven't got to that part of, like, all the Bibles corrupted and blah, blah, blah. But I read it, and it was John 5, you know, it was Romans 5, 8. Mm. God demonstrates his love for us, and yet, well, well, no, God demonstrates his love for us, even while yet we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise mm-hmm. God. That planted a seed, because I'm wrestling with the notion of my sin so heavenly upon my shoulders, and does God love me? Does Allah love me? Because every time I prayed, when I fasted for Ramadan, when I did all this stuff, Man, I would literally wrestle with Allah in and, and, and a figurative sense, not literal sense, so to say. Um, but Australia. you guys understand what I mean. And I would ask God, do you love me? And all these things will occur, um, stuff like that. And I went to the Bible, I went to the Quran, and it was Romans 5, 8 that changed my mind. I didn't understand... Um, the Trinity, or Tawud, or, you know, um, Unitarianism yet, you know, but all I knew was that the God of the Bible loved me unconditionally versus the God of the Quran, which is conditional. And I didn't understand Trinitarianism versus Unitarianism, all these theological aspects, just yet I will, in time, God is working something out in my life. And so, just baby steps. The God of the Bible loved me versus the God of the Quran, which is conditional. 
I want to believe in the God that loved me unconditionally, despite me, because I knew how wicked my heart was. So, yeah, man, so I put down the Quran, picked up the Bible, and I began very elementary, man, very elementary. So, yep. so And so uh, how, how, how long were you a Muslim, Antonio? Oh, uh, yeah, no more than three years, so... So for about three never, years, so so about three years, and you realize Islam wasn't the way. The what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It, you after three years, you realize Islam isn't the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so did I learn all the arguments within three years? Well, no. Who can? You know, but from now, from then, I learned the historical mistakes, the contradictions, the scientific contradictions, it's just a rampant, a floodgate of information. Mm -hmm. And praise God for individuals like you and Sam Shimon that Glory stand in the gap and Glory proclaim the truth, God. expose Islam for what it is. Amen. It has blinded the minds of so many people, and it breaks my heart as a young man of God that follows Jesus Christ, that wants to preach the gospel. Islam has blinded these minds, and I don't know what to do, man. It just brings me into tears. And, and so, and, and so, Antonio, Antonio, you made that uh, you made that uh, that power move from uh, Islam to Christianity. What what what? Uh, we we, have, we we want to get to some of our callers, but uh, uh, okay, yeah, I'm fi sorry. Fi final. Uh, uh, what advice would you have for uh, Muslims out there who uh, uh, who are starting to wonder if they should believe in Islam? My one advice is this: if I am wrong. Can I change my mind? And I'm gonna leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise God for that. And, and and that's a that's 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 a huge point. We we thank you, Antonio. Uh, we uh, would like to no hear problem. from you. Uh, like to hear from you again on some time because you obviously uh, have a lot. You have a lot to say. Uh, we want to get oh, some yeah. callers, but yeah, we want to get some callers. But uh, uh, that uh, that that final point. Um, when I talk, when I talk to some people, and and, and people want to start up a conversation or argument, uh, I, I often. Uh, make a point like that. I have, but before we even get into any deep discussion, I have to say, uh, look, uh, I, I know what you believe here because you, you started explaining what you believe, but um, if you're wrong, do you want to know it? And people say, well, I'm not wrong. No, I, I didn't say you were wrong. Um, I said, if you are wrong, do you want to know it? Because that is very important. Um, some people are wrong. I'm, I'm wrong about certain things, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not wrong about Christianity, but I'm wrong about certain... Th in other words, I have certain... If you went through all my beliefs, you would find some that are wrong. If I'm wrong about something, I want to know it, right? I don't want to say, oh, I want to keep believing in this because uh, I find it comforting or something like that, right? We, we, do, are you interested in the truth? And I've had people tell me, no, if I'm wrong, I don't want to know, uh, right? I'd rather go on believing what I believe uh, because it, it has some role in my life or it's comforting or something like that. But I don't want to believe anything else, and I don't care if something else is true. And so, uh, you know, the question for you Muslims out there, if you're wrong, do you want to know it? Because mm -hmm. if you do want to know it, if you do want to know it, we'd be happy to, uh, to share with you. And if you don't want to know it, I mean, think about what, what sort of religion are you following that, that encourages you not to have any concern uh, for truth or reality?